Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel and today I'm going to do something a little different. And by a little different, I mean I'm going to actually attempt to make content that is useful outside of wanting to know what's inside of a box or how much money I spent on Angelic Pretty. So obviously you know what I'm going to be talking about because you clicked on the title, but today I'm going to go into caring for my J Fashion wardrobe and the tips and tricks that I picked up along the way that help my expensive clothes continue to look expensive. I figured this would be a good one to start with because as much as we know about caring and washing and everything like that for our clothes, I find that I often run into the problem where I put on an outfit, I look in the mirror, and I think there's something is wrong, like something is off of the outfit, something doesn't look quite right. And I used to think, well, maybe it didn't fit properly, or it just wasn't a good color on me, but a lot of the time it was something simple that just one quick thing I could do would fix the whole issue. The first thing I want to talk about is ironing. I know it's not fun to iron things. If you like ironing, you're probably a masochist or you're just really good at it because I'm terrible at it, but I still do it. It's I find it's one of those things that if you were looking in the mirror and you're like, oh, this doesn't look quite right, or you look at yourself in a group shot and you feel a little unpolished, it could be because your dress needs a good iron or steam. And I took a video of me ironing a few different things to kind of give you the idea of what I'm going to talk about. The first thing I start with when I'm ironing is I do the bodice. Now, I use an iron on the Angelic Pretty cotton dresses I have. I've used them on baby dresses before. Like, basically any cotton, JSK, OP, whatever it might be, is usually okay to take a higher heat from your iron. The way I iron the bodice is in a few different parts. I try to go from the sides and then work my way inward and folding over or going over any pin tucks or pleats that are on the bodice. And I try to just do like a quick skim over any of the details. Temperature matters in this case because most of the time there's lace there and you don't want that to crunch up. So what I do is I'll put it down to a super low heat and run it gently over the lace back and forth until it's flattened out how I like it. If you leave it flat like that and don't mess with it anymore, it'll cool in that direction so you won't have your lace going in different patterns or, or like it'll be crunched up in one way and it looks kind of off and you won't have to constantly be fixing it because that's probably one of the most annoying things. When it comes to skirts, you can iron them either on the print or outside of the print depending on the print and your comfort level with it. I recommend starting inside out if you are a novice to ironing. I am not a novice but I'm definitely not a professional. I've learned how to iron like pretty much my entire life and I still suck at it but I know it's a necessary evil to make my clothes look good. With box pleats they are a little bit tricky. I've used my fantastic dolly JSK here to kind of give you an idea of what I do with box pleats and how I take care of them and it might give you a little bit of like a good path to go on when you're doing your own. So what I like to do first is spread out the box pleats and then kind of finesse them back into place with my fingers. That way I have a guideline of where I'm going to go with the iron before I actually press it down. Now with box pleats, I just start a couple at a time. I go slow. I use the point of the iron to help get those crisper lines. I really, really like the way it looks once it's ironed out and I don't iron all the way to the bottom of the print. The reason being is that when I put the dress on and I put it over a petticoat, those are going to split open a little bit anyway from the volume of the skirt. So there's no point on box plating it all the way down into the print and you don't want to make folds in the print because you want to see the print. So I like just going maybe like two thirds maximum the way down the skirt and then leaving it at that. So the next item in my arsenal is a steamer. You can find them on Amazon, like even the handheld ones, which are super good. Um, and they're not that expensive. I think they're on like $25, $30 Canadian. And I like the ones that are portable or handheld because you can bring them to cons, you can bring them to your hotel rooms, like you can fix up your dress to look really good. Um, I think those are really super helpful to have. And I, if you don't have a steamer already, like look into getting a handheld one first. So one of the big things with steamers is you can use it to get the wrinkles out of a cotton dress and you can use it to get the wrinkles out of a chiffon dress or any other type of delicate material that you don't really feel comfortable ironing or says don't iron. 
I used it on my Sweetie Violet, but if I'm going to be honest, this is a terrible example because this dress doesn't wrinkle. I mean, you could fold it up and crunch it up in a bag and take it out and then hang it on a hanger and then shake it and then it's fine. But I find with most angelic pretty dresses, even if it doesn't look wrinkly, it still restores the flow of the fabric. If you give it a quick steam, let it sit and then put it on, it'll make a world of difference. And it, it could be just like that small, small thing, but it would still transform your whole outfit shot. Using on cotton dresses is kind of the same way. You want to steam the area and then pull the dress taut afterwards. Um, that's the way I do it and I think that works the best. Again, you everyone has their own way of doing it. You might kind of settle into your own way of steaming or ironing and that's what works best for you. So definitely play around with what feels comfortable and what gives you the best results. The next thing I wanted to talk about was depilling. Now, I got this depelling tool from Amazon. I think it was like 20 bucks. It's battery powered and it has three different settings of height, like so how close the depiller will go to the garment. And this is one of the most essential things that I own. One of the things with pilling is it also picks up a lot of lint or discoloration because they're just pieces of the fibers that aren't within the garment anymore so they don't have as much color against it so you can't really you can really see how dirty it is but it's not actually dirty so with depilling you can actually make everything look perfect and smooth and good and I've tried it here on this blue cut sew and you can see like the before and the after. I didn't bother to steam over the lace on this one because I was just using it for the depilling example, but it really does make a big difference and I'm going to show you the armpits as well. And the second last thing I wanted to touch on is sewing and replacing buttons. I have a cut sew here that I really liked and I bought it, but when I bought it, you couldn't see the buttons in the listing and I had no idea they were red. So here with this cut sew, I went and I bought buttons that were kind of a white pearlized, shiny, reflective color. I've seen these before. I have them on other angelic pretty blouses so I know they work very well and I just basically snipped off the red buttons and started to replace them with the white ones that I bought. Okay the last thing I wanted to touch on is a uh, stain removal. The first thing I want to recommend no matter what however you're laundering your things is picking up a wash bag. They look like this and they have a zipper and they're plastic and what you do is you just open them up and then you stick whatever you're gonna wash in here. What this does is it keeps your clothes separate from bouncing other, like against other clothes or snagging or tearing. And especially if you have stuff that has like, like looser buttons and it, they could come off in the wash, it'll get caught inside of the wash bag. And one of the most important things about these is it allows you to use and wash your clothes with spin cycle. So the reason why I'm such an advocate for spin cycle is that when you are taking your blouse or your dress out of the wash and you use it on spin cycle, it's already pretty dry. It's like just slightly damp. That is one of the best times to start ironing your clothes. It Don't like iron them like fully wet, like soggy, just if they're damp to the touch, if you were to like put it out on a hanger for half an hour before you iron it where it's still slightly damp but like not too crazy, I find that's the best time to iron, especially like stuff that's heavy cotton or like dresses that have a lot of structure. I think that it helps set everything in place of what you're ironing better and it just also helps dry your clothes faster without just letting them sit out. Also when you hang up a garment when it's super soaking wet, if it's got any elastic in the arms or the shoulders or the straps, or if it's got buttons that are holding the straps to the dress, the weight of the water will just pull your dress down, stretch out that elastic or that shirring, or put stress on the strap buttons. So I did mention talking about stains. Um, one of the things with stains is that knowing what to do when you get a garment that's stained or if you've stained the garment yourself. First things first, always carry a Tide pen. They don't necessarily bleach clothes, but they are detergent. So just keep in mind when you're using it, like don't go ham on it, or you can possibly lift some of the color off the dress, but it's the first good preventative step to making sure that stain doesn't sit in your clothes forever. A stain is only a stain when you leave it and you don't wash it and you don't get out that 
whatever you dropped on your clothes. That's when it becomes a stain. If you drop something on your clothes or spill some tea on your, the lace or whatever, as long as you take care of it right away, it's not technically a stain. It's just something that happened and you can get rid of it. So what happens when it does become a stain? Uh, you want to use a stain remover and that sounds like common sense but I'm going to recommend one that I use all the time. This is the Resolve Gold Oxy Action Laundry Stain Remover. It looks like this. This has taken so much stuff out of clothes. It takes the darkness off the bottom of socks. It takes out tea stains from lace. It takes out oil stains i've seen like it's i've lifted oil stains out of a sweater with this um and it like it literally means like in 30 seconds you can see it happening and you can you put some on and then it like foams up and it lifts the stain right out and then you wash it and then it's done and when you pull it out and you dry it that stain like nine times out of ten it's gone i love this it's so good it, i can't say enough about it and it saved a lot of my clothes that i bought with unaware of stains and things that I've done to my clothes myself. And the last stain remover thing that I'm gonna talk about is OxyClean. I know it's one of those things where, um, <laughs> like this is just so stupid, I have this giant fucking bucket of OxyClean, but this stuff is great. I use, a I use it a lot. It also gets like the smell out of clothes. So if you ever get a garment from secondhand or like from like Taobao and it has that weird factory smell to it, um, just like, wash it and sometimes depending on how long that garment's been sitting in the place where the smell came from so like say it's been in somebody's closet and their family is like chain smokers and they smoke inside the house that dress is gonna smell terrible right when you get it out of the package so using stuff like oxyclean is the way to go it removes stains but it also lifts the odors and that's like a super important thing that you can't really get with a stain remover you can use this one of two ways you can just throw a scoop in your laundry and it will clean everything and give your whites like a brighter like clearer white look um you can also use it to as a, like a pre-soak. For pre-soak, I just mix some of it with hot water in a bucket or in a bowl or a sink and I just drop the garment in and leave it. I think a lot of this laundering part is you have to remember that you need to launder it like normal with any stain remover, any OxyClean, any bleach. That way it will actually like lift out the rest of the product that's sitting in there because what can happen is if it's sitting in there, you just wash it and you rinse it out and then you leave it to dry, like that product can still be embedded in the fabric, which can weaken the fabrics, which can uh, like set, like cause a reaction the next time you wash it. So that spot could lighten even more. It's just important that like whatever you're laundering with whatever kind of stain remover, like make sure you actually put it through a normal wash afterwards. Okay, so that's it. That is my first formal actual video of something that I hope is helpful or might help somebody kind of get better at caring for their clothing or maybe also give people kind of a new tip or a new trick that they didn't really know or use before. Um, I think this is one of those things that we all assume that people do or we all assume that we should do but we you know we never get the time for it or it's like it's so much work like I own way too many dresses and to wash them every time is is absolutely annoying so I do it in chunks but like I get it like it's just one of those things that we have to do because we have expensive clothes and we want them to look expensive for a very long time. Again, thanks so much for sticking with me. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will catch you in the next one.